Tom Donnie here in Fort Dodge looking at a sonnet I run at Bonneville doing some in-depth carburetor testing. You can see this is fitted with triple expansion chambers, two up on top and one goes underneath in the original spot. And that allows me to fit three air fuel ratios. I use COSO wideband air fuel ratios. And when I do that, then I can produce tests, probably the, the most significant testing done on triple Saab, triple carbs since uh, Saab invented them, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I think probably the equipment I'm using is, is superior to what they had back in the day. I've got actually uh, EGT gauges on all three cylinders and then uh, triple air fuel ratios. This is a picture of a Lancia carburetor. The, the Lancia is kind of a rare carburetor. The one thing's kind of unique about the Lancia, it doesn't have any shared porting. Um, each cylinder is 100% individual for the intake. <coughs> Excuse me. So if we look at the, the jetting here, um, you can see it's pretty close. We've got a 13.4 on the top one, which is not unusual to see a little bit of a change on that. And again, you're using two carburetors here to fill three cylinders, so a little bit of variance there. But what I want to show you here to start with is the this is a Monte Carlo late carburetor. Uh, it's got the 34W-2 carbs. And this had a, a 10 point difference in the center cylinder. Now the center cylinder on all my pictures will be the middle gauge. The, the front cylinder will be the top gauge and the uh, rear cylinder will be of course then the bottom gauge. So it gives you an idea there how lean this thing was running. Um, with uh, just a 10 point difference. It took putting it a 15 point spread. So I had to go say one third, this is, these are just examples by the way, but 135 in the center jet, 120 on the outers in order to get that. And we talk about where's the main jet? It's on the side of the carburetor. It'll always face the firewall on the triple carbs, or not the firewall, but the, the right side fender well. It'll be above the starter, conveniently located, so when you drain it out, it'll catch fire. And there's your um, main jet in the car in the carrier and the jet inside that we're referencing changing. But this is uh, the same carburetors now with a 15 point difference and you can see how nice and even my air fuel ratio readings are. And that's what you're after. It's a 15 point spread I've determined by running all these tests. I ran probably uh, over 30 tests with different carburetors um, testing both air fuel ratio and then performance also. And again, this is the 73 24 17. It's the late 66 up Monte Carlo. And what makes all these triple carbs special, except for the Lancia, is they all share air with the center cylinder. And it started in Bonneville where we were kept losing number two piston when we would go extreme with timing and by leaning it out. And at the time we were running a single exhaust system and we always ran 10 points higher in the center cylinder, always. But we still had failures. And then I remembered Saab back in the day, this, this 73, 2007. Very common to see these jetted, they'd actually be jetted 135 in the center and 120 on the outer. Uh, for my example, I've used a 15 point spread with a 125, 140, 125. And again, that's just for an example purpose. Find out where it runs good, where you're not following plugs. Um, and you've got good performance and, and not smoking too bad and that's a good place to be going. Air fuel ratio gauges are not that expensive. I highly recommend putting one on if you've got multiple vehicles so you can test. Um, again, you're going to be tested a blend and the, the key is to provide you know, life for these engines a 15 point spread between the center and the outer two cylinders. Here again, this is a 15 point spread with this 73-1098, the early style Monte Carlo carbs. And then we've got the 73 2007 with a 15 point spread. It's a little rich on that rear cylinder. And some of these carburetors just ran richer either on the front or rear, just kind of the way they worked. And obviously if we had triple chambers and triple gauges, we could fine tune everything like we would for racing. But for normal driving and normal racing, you really don't need that. If you go with your 15 point spread, you'll be good there. I also have the gaskets here. Remember these gaskets are unique to the carburetor. You've got the wide type for the, all the early triples and then the narrow gasket for the later Monte Carlo and uh, standard carbs. Here's the GT. Oddly enough, the GT was the best performing downdraft carburetor. Um, but uh, here's the chart on, the, on this one. And again, this one ran, it was just a little bit richer on the front, or a little bit leaner on the front cylinder. Um, it, 
you know, the rear's a little leaner too. It's just the way some of them worked, and this one performed extremely well uh, jetted up like this. Again, it was the best performing carburetor of, of all of them I had that are downdraft. And then we get into the Sonnet. And uh, again, the Sonnet is where I started my quest because of the problems we were having. And as soon as we put the triple chambers on, we discovered we were running number two cylinder lean, plain and simple. It was running about 17 to one, and the others were running you know, in the 14 range. So we knew that we had a problem there and we had to jet up 15 points higher. And uh, here's a confirmation of that a little bit. Um, this is jetted up with 15 points and you can see the front cylinders running a little bit uh, richer. This is with no air box on. And what I want to point out with these air boxes is the air box has a side induction toward the rear of the motor. So the rear cylinder is going to run leaner than the center cylinder. And then the front cylinder will run the richest because of spit back. All these carburetors spit like a big dog if you don't have an air cleaner on. Obviously they spit if they have one on there too. But all that spit back, that as the air comes rushing in the front, there's no spit back for the rear cylinder, so it runs the leanest. The center cylinder is getting spit back from the rear cylinder, and then of course the front cylinder picks up spit back from the middle and the rear, so it runs even richer yet. And here's confirmation of that right here on the tests I ran. And I've got multiple tests that I did run and they all confirm the same thing. That, that front cylinder with an air box on is gonna run rich because it's getting spit back from all the other cylinders. So keep that in mind if you're tuning. Um, let's say I started this one with a tune that was a 140 in the center and a 125 on the outers, um, and I'm running an air box now. I'm gonna probably run a, a 120 on the front cylinder because it's gonna get twice as much spit back I'm going to drop the 140 down to 137.5 and then I'm going to increase that 125 up to a 127.5 if I'm running an air box. So it's kind of a goofy spread. I'd go 120, 137, 127.5 if I was running 125s on the outers and 140 on the center. And that should get you pretty close without having to rig up triple chambers because triple chambers are kind of a pain in the butt. Um, so much so I was not able to run air filters on any of the downdrafts because every, I had water pump and chamber in the way. So obviously if you had an air cleaner on all these downdrafts, it might make a slight difference. I think they're pretty benign in design, unlike the Sonnet where it's sucking from the side. And actually um, Nicholas from XP Power had mentioned to me that one time that he had thought they were running richer because of spit back on that front cylinder. And indeed now we've got test you know, we've got triple chambers and air fuel meters to test all that. And as far as I know, no one's done any testing like this. Again, this is probably the most comprehensive testing ever done on all three of the carburetors. So hopefully it'll help you keep your engines alive. Uh, I do sell Weisco pistons, by the way. You see the Weisco box there? If uh, you decide to uh, not jet it up 15 higher in the center cylinder, I've got great pistons that I sell. Um, Dave Bauer sells pistons, rebuilds motors too, Bud Clark. So there's lots of us building motors. Um, no problem if you want to melt a piston. It was odd, right after my, I finished all my testing, I had two phone calls from individuals with melted number two pistons. And both of them, the highest spread was five points between the center and the outers. So pretty much confirmed what, I was, what we know the testing does is you need to run this center cylinder richer. So 15 points, boys and girls. If you run a 140 in the center, 125 is on the outers. So look at where you're at right now with your vehicle and adjust from there. If you've got questions or whatever, Tom Saab at Gmail. I'm always available online that way. Um, so hopefully this will help someone keep a motor together or put you past your competition just a little bit. This is Tom Donnie from Fort Dodge, Iowa. I'm going to do a uh, performance test on the next video that will show the differences in these carburetors' performances. Have a good day and thanks for watching.